The council has called you in. So what did they say? I said, what, what's, how do you pronounce the first name? My, my last name? Yeah, your first name and your last name. Can you hear me not so good? I'm on a cell phone, so maybe not so good. Yeah, now I can hear you. Uh, okay, ra- uh, Ras- Rasmus Tisitis. Rasmus Tisitis. How, how do you do the last one? Tisitis. <laughs> Tisitis? Yes, that's right. Okay. Rasmus Tavitas. Oh, hey, I'll try that. I'll try to do my best on that. Hey, this is Chris Moser. How are you? Yeah. I'm doing good. How are you? Okay. I'm doing well. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks for uh, coming aboard tonight. Um, usually I have a co-host, uh, Jeff Clark, but uh, he's doing this thing called working, so I guess I'll, I'll let him do that instead of instead of being on the podcast. I believe it's like 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon here in the state. Oh, okay. And, uh, 9 o'clock in, in Sweden. You're in Stockholm, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. All right. Um, before we get started or anything, did you have any uh, questions or did you just want to get right into it? No, no problem. We can just uh, get, get into it. Will it take like okay. uh, half an hour or an hour? What, what's this? Yeah, I mean, usually, yeah, usually half an hour to an hour. And I mean, it really depends on what we get into. Um, okay, you know, you, cool. It it's, never takes more than an hour. It's just I just don't time it. Because I know yeah, if, okay. if you have a steady flow, you have a lot of information to give out there. I don't like to cut people off, so that's why. Oh, I'll see. I'll see. Well, and right. what kind of aspect will it be focusing on? Will it be like the fan film phenomena as in general? Will it be like focusing on Star Wars or like filmmaking? So, yeah. Yeah, it's like a free for all, man. <laughs> yeah. We'll, okay. We'll yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely <laughs> talk about your. Definitely talk about your film. I mean, your other works, and then uh, you know, any anything we get into, anything you want to talk about. It's you know, sometimes oh, we great. talk about things that don't even have to do with fan films or even movies in general. You know. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. All right. Do you want to start out? Just give us uh, some background on you and uh, what led you up to uh, get you into doing a, a Star Wars fan film. Uh, yeah, I think it was back in like. 2002 or three or so when I started to be aware of the fan film phenomena, I was visiting this uh, fan film forum, uh, the Force.net, regularly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I saw and I saw these uh, very ambitious fan films like popping up, and it, they were very in quality for, from like guys in the forest with their bathrobes, whacking sticks at each other, and <laughs> to this production that had some really nice production value. So. Uh, that was my first introduction to fan films, and I was very inspired by those. So it was not until '05 when I started to make uh, my own attempt to make a fan film. Um, that was First Destiny, and I had just uh, graduated from uh, uh, high school. Okay. And uh, me and my friends were uh, like gathering to, together, like I'm a little, let's let's make a film project together. And uh, I was very interested in like this fan film phenomenal, where I, uh, if there's something I don't have the knowledge for, I could just reach out to, towards the, the web and see if there, there is anyone who's uh, willing to pro- provide their service, just uh, as a uh, exercise. Um, right. or, or uh, opportunity to show their their skills in a uh, in a film, so so. 
that was yeah, my so, I mean, initial... I know in the... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut I was just going to say, yeah, I know in the States, no problem. I mean, the, the fan film community is kind of a, a knit group because you always... You can always connect the dots. There's always, like, one group, and there's a couple people in that group that know another group that's making another fan film, and it all seems to connect in, in a weird way. I don't know if you experienced that because uh, you're uh, way over in Europe there, but um, in the States, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. Well, here it's completely different. Uh, it's uh, super rare that uh, people were making fan films back in the day. I think there are a few more now, but, but only a few because... Uh, past years I've been at these uh, conventions and there have been people approaching me and talking about uh, their fan film projects and showing me their stuff so uh, it seems to be a, a growing um, phenomenon here as well but uh, not in a way that you can map out uh, how we're doing a fan film over here and that, like, like you said in the States <laughs> right right <laughs> Like that seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, you, you you're aware of that you know who Kevin Bacon is, obviously, right? Yeah, of course, of course. It's like, do you ever you ever hear that game, Seven Degrees to Kevin Bacon? No. <laughs> it's, it's oh, it's, it's like the uh -huh. yeah. Go ahead. Go I think I think I know it, but you can go ahead and explain it. Sure. I was just gonna say, yeah, basically you can uh, say any actor's name, and you can go out to at least or up to seven movies where it connects to him. Yeah. So you, you say, well, you know, one actor has been in a movie with this other actor, this actor has been in another movie with this actor, and that actor was in a movie with Kevin Bacon. So that's like oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a big joke. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, back in the day uh, at the 05 when I was starting up making this, this, this project and I was talking to people about it, uh, most of them were like, what? What do you say that you were going to do? Are you like, nuts? A Star Wars film? And you're yeah. like, 19? What's that? Uh, so uh, I have to, I'm super grateful for my my team and the, my cast and crew who um, believed in me and the project to um, voluntarily uh, participate in during the weekends to to make this because uh, I first thought well the post production is just going to take a year or so to to finish it and <laughs> right. in in the end I, I i didn't really estimate how, how much time it would take so it uh, landed at like nine years to finish it so wow yeah <laughs> but yeah. it's a feature I, I i can i can say that it's a one hour and 40 minutes of uh, star wars uh, entertainment and we pretty much got everything that uh, the star wars movies got like space battle chases lightsabers the bar fights Everything except the budget. <laughs> right. A lot of it was green screen, right, if, I, if I'm looking at it correctly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, that was our way to uh, sort like, in a cheap way, uh, being able to film most of the stuff because uh, like 80%, 90% of the film is created in the computer. Right. Uh, and uh, basically what we could afford was filmed so that was like, we built a green screen, we made the costumes, and uh, I had a friend's camera that I borrowed so we could shoot the film. And it was like, uh, I had to figure out later how we're going to uh, make this uh, all come together <laughs> in, in the end. Yeah. But, so we, in a way, had to invent the wheel to, to get uh, this thing going because that's also one of the aspects of why it took nine years to complete. It's not only the fact that it was... Uh, 1,897 visual effect shots. It's the thing right, like, yeah. where do I find all the people who can help make this thing? Right, right. Because we didn't have Facebook world. and YouTube uh, uh, in the same way. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was like... MySpace so, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's so fun because I still get notifications from uh, really? Disney. Uh, we have still have our MySpace page, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. like, oh, right. <laughs> and also yes. back in the day, uh, since we were making a feature, we weren't able, uh, not sure how we were going to put it up online. Because yeah. nowadays you can po post anything like there's no limit almost how, how long something can be. But back then it was like, hmm, maybe we should cut it up into 15-minute sections and release it that way. So technology, in a way, caught up in our ambition. <laughs> yep, absolutely. The internet speeds are, are faster, and you, know, you used to have that at least here AOL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, 
you can watch a feature length movie, you know, for a week straight. <laughs> it just, yeah. It kept buffering and yeah, times have changed for the better. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, talk, talk about, it uh, looks like you had some writers on there. Um, and you wrote some of the, the movie too. Did you just come up with a plot and you had other people um, write it out for you? Uh, or, uh, I had some other people uh, write it out. Uh, this, the film's story is based on uh, an American guy named uh, Michael ba- Bano, who uh, I first came in touch like uh, a year before we went into production. And we have been talking back and forth like uh, about uh, working together uh, on a project. And, and he approached me and talked about this project that he had called The Shows in Force. Uh, and uh, that story had basically the same characters, Raven, Ariana, Lord Siege, and everyone. Uh, so he said, well, why don't I just uh, give it a try and translate from a fan fiction into a, a script? And I said, sure. Uh, and so he, he went away and like made a first draft in like four or five days because he was super excited to, <laughs> to get this, uh, this script done. But uh, it was my suggestion that uh, we should change the title because the chosen force was like uh, sounded a little too fan filmy in a way. Yeah. Uh, so I said, "How about Fred's Destiny?" Uh, it sounded like more poetic and grandeur and epic, in my opinion. Uh, but also, he had um, uh, one of his friends, uh, Jeffrey Long, who came into the project and made a draft uh, on the script because. Uh, I think it's always good to get uh, other voices into a screenplay, so not every character maybe speaks the same way. Or it can also, it's always very useful to have a second opinion yeah, on a script. And yeah. From a different writer, a writer is always always helpful. Yeah. Look at yeah. Look at James Gunn with uh, right Avengers: Affinity War. Um, yeah. The Russo brothers. Well, the Russo brothers didn't write it. I forget who wrote it, but uh, he he came in and you know wrote most of the dialogue for. Uh, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy, so it's kind of yeah. the same effect, yeah. Yeah, so so they would keep their their uh, character voices in a way, so they wouldn't uh, talk differently. Right, exactly. So that, that, exactly. that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Because he has he definitely you know has their voice, so it only it only made sense. I don't think anyone else yeah. projected you know their particular. Um, style of humor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Are these people like? Um, I mean, are they? Do they have like regular jobs and they just kind of do this as a hobby? Do they actually? Are they in some type of um, film or television world at all that you're aware of? And the the writers or? Yeah, the writers. Uh, yeah, they have uh, normal day jobs and they yeah, uh, head writing you know, as a hobby. Yeah, yeah, that's usually. How about yourself? You just kind of, kind of make films on the side and have a, a regular. Well, from from, from time to time. Uh, yeah. Right now, I have two small children, and uh, yeah. for me, right now in life, uh, working as freelance uh, filmmaker is not ideal. So I have, right. a, quote unquote, a normal day job. I yeah. uh, w- work as a teacher. Oh, okay. And uh, I have my uh, film company on the side. I make uh, commercials and film trailers. Oh, very good, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're just a young dude, right? You're only like in your early 30s, 30, 31, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got, you got yeah, years to, uh, you know, burst up your craft and hopefully do what you, you love to do. Well, you said you're a teacher, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you probably love that too. But what would you rather do? Would you rather make films all day or teach all day? Uh, well, the thing is, of course, I would rather be able to uh, make films all day. But yeah. uh, it, my experience, was like it, when it comes to something creative, it, it, it has its ups and downs. And uh, whenever you get a chance to work on something creative, very very intensive, and then you just need to, a moment to like pause from it. That's my normal day job. When I pause from the creative, and the, the, then I get back to that at night or whenever there's a deadline I need need to uh, to reach. So, uh, just having it something like all the time would be very 
I think the creative, the, the result of the work will suffer in the end. Mm. At least for me. Understandable. Hey, what do you think about, um, I mean, like you said, you, you have a feature film and it, there are uh, lightsabers involved in the film, but you actually like have a story. Um, a lot of the Star Wars fan films that I've seen, I mean, a majority of them, it's like 98% of them that come out, uh, just seem to be one big lightsaber battle. I don't even post them on yeah. the site anymore because they're all like the same. So um, I don't know if it's a question or more of a comment, but uh, yeah, I commend you on actually having a story <laughs> and just not, you know, doing one big lightsaber battle for the whole film because that seems to be a lot yeah. of them that uh, are being made. Well, so, the, the uh, lightsabers are cool. I mean, like, it's a really neat effect and it's uh, what's unique for Star Wars, the, the lightsabers. I mean, you can just show a person a lightsaber and then they think of Star Wars, even if they haven't watched the Star Wars films. Uh, but uh, for me, it's, of course, I love lightsabers, but it has evolved also to, I love the Star Wars universe. In general, just the, the kind of characters, the kind of contrast between characters. So uh, when we want to make the film, I want to uh, dive into that aspect more than just showing a fancy lightsaber fight. Right. Uh, we do have lightsaber fights in Fires of Destiny, uh, but I, I challenge my writers to, let's try to not put a lightsaber in the film for like the first 20 minutes. 20 or 15 minutes, and I think we were able to reach that goal. And the first time we see a lightsaber, it's only for like this training sequence when the uh, lead character is using, you know, like one of those remote droids like Luke right, had. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did manage I, think I, did, was, I did watch it a long time ago when it first came out, and uh, I, I, oh, you know, I meant to watch the whole thing uh, this morning, but of course I got caught up with the whole freaking conference call. Mumbo Jumbo. Ah, uh, no problem. <laughs> so I did watch <laughs> no it for half an hour, and, and that was that scene was in there, so I could see that scene. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen any of the behind-the-scenes features that were released online? No, I didn't. I did. Ah, okay. I have to check that out. Yeah. Because I mean, like watching a film, it's one thing, but uh, being part of uh, a film and just trying to tell someone what the whole experience is like it's a completely different thing thing because yeah, uh, yeah. it's insane in a way because uh, what you do is like this kind of smoke and mirrors something that you think <laughs> is one yeah. thing is actually a completely different thing and actors who never met each other might have scenes together uh, for instance we have uh, one character in the, the film and he filmed his scenes like three and a half years before, uh, after the rest of the actors. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh. uh, yeah, and I even think he has a scene together with another actor who's fortunate not be even still alive. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the interesting about the filmmaking process and, and also about for this film, uh, in a way, because it has evolved uh, over such a long time because... If I, uh, in a miraculous way, would have finished the film uh, back in 06 or, or 07, it would be, have been a completely different thing because yeah. since I matured and my filmmaking, uh, I matured, the film matured with me because during that nine-year period, I also worked on other people's projects and my own, uh, my own projects. So I could take those experience and learning stuff and apply them to For the Destiny. Right. Cut, right. cutting some scenes differently or re rearrange them and use uh, footage in in the more creative ways and so on. I'm sorry, I think I just derailed from the question. It was about life things. <laughs> so what, what were we talking about? <laughs> no, that's all right. Like I said, we go all over the place. They don't. <laughs> yeah. No set, uh, yeah. No set agenda or anything. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. The, the, uh, the, one of the first fan films I... I saw was this um, I think it was called Jewel it was these two guys in black cloaks who were like whacking uh, lightsabers uh, towards each other and it was completely green screened okay no, I don't think I've ever heard Jewel you said Jewel yes no. oh Duel I'm sorry Duel yes yeah okay I thought you said Jewel okay oh sorry 
Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I saw that. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember when it was uh, filmed or when it was released, but it was like, for, for me, it was very interesting. Like, oh, okay, they made this whole short film against green screen and this environment that looks very exotic and interesting. It's not really there. It's all just made in the computer. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen like the likes of uh, Troops or uh, Dark Redemption? Those are. Uh, oh yeah, those sure. are much older sure. uh, Star Wars fan films. Yeah, I, I was like devouring into those those films, and like whenever they were uh, releasing some kind of behind the scenes content, and that was yeah. Uh, uh, it wasn't just pure joy for me because it was like people. Uh, like me that was making these uh, films like uh, a love letter to, to Star Wars yeah, uh, or any other uh, fan films. Oh, um, you must have seen Batman Dead End. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's another classic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's when... It's like uh, a fa- fan film of his own. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they took... Uh, Lucasfilm actually took uh, Dark Redemption offline or had him force it offline. Because that was made out back in the 90s. Um, oh, then, really? Yeah, and then they changed their... It was weird. They changed their whole focus, and then Lucasfilm came out with the, the Star Wars Fan Film Awards, so they kind of changed gears yeah. on that, the thoughts and everything. But yeah, once upon a time, uh, they were taking these things offline, and pretty much oh. most of the you know companies pretty much leave them alone. Um, yeah. Well, they, they did take uh, Fred's Destiny down as well, so... But that was uh, due to the um, John Williams mu- music that we used in the uh, opening credits. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, so that was a real bummer because uh, we almost had uh, 10 million views on the film. Yeah. And then I got this, uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's called in, in English, but I got this letter from, from them via YouTube that they yeah, were making cease, a claim. Cease and desist, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was just trying to make like, oh, this this is just uh, an, uh, uh, a showcase of people's work. We're not making any claim or anything Star Wars related and uh, yada yada. But uh, in the end, it was not uh, good enough. So they took it down from the web. And it was, yeah. uh, it's a pity. I don't think they really care anymore because I've seen you know, fan films using John Williams' music all the time. So I think they've kind of yeah. laughed off at the... Uh, I mean, what can you do? You got so so many people out there. They take the movie, they upload it themselves, and kind of a yeah, exactly. <laughs> At exactly. this point, right? Well, in, in the and... end, uh, in the end, I I kind of got uh, what I wanted from the film. Uh, yeah. I got uh, the, the film released, uh, finished, uh, and uh, a, a great deal of people saw it. And, and, before it got uh, took down, and I mean, even if uh, Disney wants to the film to be erased from the internet, it, it, it's impossible because it was spread across the world for like three right, years. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's why I don't think they really, you know, expend too much energy anymore going after. No, them. exactly. Like I said, it's a losing battle. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. What's uh, why don't you talk about the special effects a little bit and uh, who you got to do all those? Oh sure. Uh, <laughs> well, where's to start? I, I could actually uh, talk about my lead visual effects artist, uh, Andreas okay. Feig, uh, who's from Germany, and that I got in contact with in '07. Uh, talk about this project, and uh, he, in the end, made like uh, almost half of the visual effects in the film. Everything from uh, dialogue scenes in the throne room to the bar fight to the asteroid chase. So he, uh, his visual eye was, uh, is like a, a quarter uh, or or more, a third of the film uh, in a way. And without him and his uh, super support and uh, knowledge uh, and, and evolved knowledge, the film wouldn't have uh, been made or complete in a way because... Uh, Getting that many uh, effect shots from one guy is um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I was really fortunate to get in contact yeah. with him, and uh, he has uh, since then made a, a great career uh, in the visual effects uh, industry. He has worked on 
uh, Game of Thrones. He's worked on oh, the wow, two yeah. recent Star Wars films. Uh, so oh, I'm uh, yeah. So I'm super happy for for his sake because. Yeah, he got to work on the fan film and then like the the real deal. I'm uh, yeah, really happy. And also his story uh, is the same for like a few other team members uh, who also worked on Friends of Destiny and has since then worked in the industry on uh, in ILM or any of the other big visual effects houses. So uh, I'm, su- I'm super proud to be able to say that uh, when I re- reached out to these people uh, back then and told them that this will be a way to showcase their work uh, to a large audience, that uh, in the end also were generated a job to them so, so they could get this dream job. Yeah. So it happens. Happens. it happens. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Look at uh, yeah, Kevin Rubio with... Uh, the guy that did Troops, he went off and uh, wrote a bunch of Dark Horse Star Wars comics. So yeah, it, yeah. Exactly. In some cases, you can it can generate uh, actual work. Go figure. Exactly. Exactly. But and that's that's the thing uh, that I talk to people about. Uh, it's not like uh, 10 million views wanted to see a film I made. They wanted to see something Star Wars related. Just right. have those two words, Star Wars. Uh, it gets people attention. And let's not forget about th- that this film was made during the era where there was no more Star Wars. We started uh, post uh, Revenge, of, uh, Revenge of the Sith and the film was released a year before, a year and a half before Force Awakens. So it was like this almost 10 years period when there was going to happen no more Star Wars. Right, yeah. So people are like, oh, what can we do? Is the fan community the thing that's going to make the uh, Star Wars uh, saga live on or what's going to happen? And now we've got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Disney you, will beat you... it to death yeah. instead. <laughs> now they're going to get uh, <laughs> Disney's going to yeah, slap us over the head with it. What do you think yeah. of... Uh, I don't know if you saw... I just saw Solo last night. Um, that, honestly... It was a cam. Um, so, you know, the quality wasn't par, but uh, it didn't really do much for me. It was an okay movie, okay. but I'm kind of glad I didn't actually spend money yeah. to go see it. But what did you think, if, if you saw Solo, and uh, more specifically, what did you think of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi? Yeah, I saw it uh, last week. Uh, and, and I mean, I, I think it was good. Uh, I had to sort of um, check my adult brain uh, at the door, because <laughs> right. ev- everything that me as a adult self, uh, what what I want from a Star Wars film will never happen. It, yeah. we, we we will never get these dark, intricate stories that still are these blockbusters. That will never happen. Yeah. So, but in the end, the films that I want to see when I was a kid and a teen, they are uh, being released now. It's like a new Star Wars film every year. Uh, there, there are these gluttony of uh, superhero flicks every now and then. I mean, like, it's it's a, a great period also to be a Star Wars fan because uh, now we are getting more Star Wars films. Uh, yeah. And before there was just so these six treasured uh, uh, films that was like uh, holy in a way. And uh, I mean, like, it's the same thing with the James Bond films. I mean, there are plenty of James Bond films that are just pure garbage. But there are oh, some really good ones there as well. And it, in the end, there will be the same thing about the, the upcoming Star Wars films. So uh, in my opinion, I just hope that uh, this solo film uh, breaks even in the end so they just keep making these films because it's not... Uh, I'm not the, that kind of guy who's like overprotective. Like, oh, don't touch Star Wars. It means too much to me. Oh, don't touch it. <laughs> right. It's my you childhood. my because... childhood, right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, the films, I mean, uh, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, they will still exist. They won't vanish from the Earth. It's like, it's uh, the same likeliness as if the Bible would, will be out of print. The, those films will always be there. And you can always just decide, well, I won't see this new Star Wars film. I can just go back and watch the new one. Oh, and the old one. Oh, but now there's coming a new one that I want to see. So Star Wars can be whatever you like it to be. It doesn't have to right. be this 
divisive thing like, oh, I hated it, oh, I loved it. It's like, chill out, guys, it's just a movie. <laughs> In the end, it's not life or death. Yeah, it's totally the And you hear that, totally you hear that from a guy yeah. who spent nine years making a Star Wars time frame. Right. So. <laughs> All right, exactly. Yeah, my buddy, my buddy saw it, uh, Solo on Talking, and uh, they loved it. I and mean, I didn't yeah. dislike it. Uh, I just didn't, you know, it didn't do anything for me. It wasn't like, I really enjoyed The Force Awakens, and I know a lot of people couldn't yeah. stand The Last Jedi, but I really, I enjoyed that as well. But Solo, just, um, you know, it was just, you know, a movie I'll forget about in another day. Yeah. Well, the thing about, I, uh, if we're just going to talk about the new films, the thing I liked the most about Force Awakens was, like, they, they took Star Wars back and made it, uh, a modern blockbuster and they have really good characters yeah. uh, I think that the film sort of uh, went into a halt uh, as soon as they introduced this new Death Star that was kind of a, a lame thing to introduce uh, I think and the, the movie <laughs> right. got uh, diverted into something else uh, but uh, the characters what was uh, what I fell in love in that film and then uh, uh, the next year when we got uh, Rogue One, uh, oh, yeah, I really sure. liked Great. the yeah. the I really liked the premise. I really liked the aesthetics, the visual look of uh, Rogue One, uh, and I think that the characters were good. But what they were missing in that film was uh, a lead, uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, what was the character's name? Jen Erso. Uh, her character, she was there but she was was not making any active character decisions i mean like she's more like the the, the tag along for the ride for the most part of the mm-hmm. film and in the end she, spoiler she doesn't even get to kill her uh father's killer yeah. some other guy does that so that was maybe the biggest issue i had with with the rogue one uh i haven't revisited that film that much but uh, when I think of it and the things uh, that I liked and disliked, I think the, the likes, oh, um, what's it called? There are more likes than dislikes in Rogue One. What's that? Not and about, that uh, there are more likes than dislikes about Rogue gotcha. One, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. A lot and, of people bitched because um, there wasn't a lot of characterizations for the main characters. It's, yeah, that didn't really yeah. bug me. Um, you know, Maybe I'll make yeah. it up. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. the viewers can kind of make up their backstory, you know. So that's important. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and about the, the Last Jedi, I think the stuff that I loved was everything that Ray was involved in uh, and the Kylo. I think uh, those are really strong, interesting characters. Uh, I think Poe's journey in the, that film when he... Um, he, he uh, Oh, never mind. You, you, you've seen the film, so uh, I think that was very, uh, very interesting as well. But the, the thing that was like uh, really killed the film for me, in a way, was the whole uh, side story with Rose and Finn. But oh, that's yeah, like picking yeah. up an open door. Everybody has complained about that, so yeah. it, it was a pity because uh, I had this really high hopes for where the this work could could take us with uh, the last Jedi because the the trailers looked so very promising and it had this like dark attitude to uh, to it and I was like m- my mature Star Wars fan in me was like oh could this be it could this be the the Star Wars film I've been looking for and in a way it was uh, because uh, it did take some new um, new grounds that, that had not been um, uh, touched before in the Star Wars film, but also there was like this humor in it uh, that is not really uh, what pan in hand with me. Um, like the the iron that w- that was like descending, and we first think it's chipped, and it turns out to be an iron that is uh, ironing in the, the uh, officers' uniforms. Uh, <laughs> that was like, oh yeah. god, they went there. Yeah, my big bitch I mean, with um, yeah, uh, is that uh, okay? The first, the Force Awakens, um, you know, they spend the whole movie looking for the map to find Luke Skywalker, yeah. and supposedly Luke Skywalker put, you know, 
put the two pieces in the map and the droids or, or send it out there. And then the last Jedi, he didn't want anyone to find them. So why the hell did yeah. he, you know, send out the map in the first place? So that was like... Yeah, big, exactly, exactly. Big, uh, the plot hole. I think that, that if, if we're going to go in and try to fix uh, Force Awakens, I, I think they should have made the map into more pieces. So it would be like this puzzle that they had to find these different maps uh, to piece them together, trying to find him where, or where he was uh, most recently. So, so because it's like now it's like this huge map and there's like this missing hole in it. <laughs> it's like that's stupid. I mean, yeah. uh, they should have at least divided it into three or some sort. And it could be like the first order has one piece and the resistance has one piece and that third last piece they're trying to define in a way. And they could have stretched it. It didn't have to be just one zone trying to folks in on the map, they could have stretched it even to the last Jedi and have uh, them finding the piece in the first act of the last Jedi and uh, then meet Luke, but, oh well. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically the Force Awakens was just, you know, when you get right down to it, it was just a remake of A New Hope anyway. Yeah, but it was awesome to see Han Solo back in the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And people bitch about, you know, him dying, but Harrison Ford wanted his character to die you know, in the original uh, movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. So what made you, this is just a side note that uh, I wrote down here, um, what made you decide to uh, do the film in English? Uh, well, it's actually um, it Star Wars dub- in, in Swedish and the dialogue doesn't sound that really sexy to it. I mean, like, uh, if I should say, uh, may the force be with you, it would sound, sound like something like, more kraft than vara med dig. It doesn't have the same kind of uh, sexiness to it, okay. you know, and, uh, and also the, like, the weight to it uh, and the f- film aspect to it uh, in English, it's, uh, it's much more forgiving. Gotcha, okay. And, and, and also, like, uh, making a Star Wars film uh, were kind of crazy, but but if we were going to make it in Swedish as well, that would be a disaster. And we were joking around on set, like uh, because we were having these uh, big uh, moments, like uh, no, you don't touch him, and they were, then we were laughing a lot, like saying it uh, in Swedish, nej, rör honom inte, and you hear it's like it doesn't have the same weight to it. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Uh, did you want to touch on uh, any any of the actors? Who's this Paul L. L. F. S. Long? He's in some rock group or something. Is yeah, uh, Paul Paul Olofsson, who plays uh, King Juster. Uh, he was back then the the, the most experienced uh, actor that we were fortunately uh, got on board. Um, yeah. He uh, had played in this uh, rock band that was called National Theater here in Sweden, and uh, he had... I mean, is that a well-known band yeah. in Sweden? Yeah, in, yeah, in a way. Uh, it was very big during the 70s and 80s. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, some of the more senior actors were like, oh, Paul Olofsson is here. How did you get him? <laughs> so, so that was great. Uh, but, but a fun side note about uh, Paul is that uh, his mm-hmm. daughter is actually in the film as well. But in the film, she plays his wife. Okay. So the, 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 <laughs> That's weird. The, the, the queen, uh, the brown-haired queen, uh, Sabine von Gaske, uh-huh. is actually his real-life daughter. Huh. Yeah. Uh, because when we were uh, uh, trying to find uh, an actress to, to play the queen, uh, I, meet, uh, I met a lot of uh, uh, older w- women tr- trying to, to play this role, but... None of them really had the the right uh, English for it. And when I met Paul, he said, well, why don't you have an audition together with uh, my daughter? She has great English and she would probably love to do it. So and then I met her and was like, well, it's weird, but she, she looks great and would be perfect for the part. So why don't you just give it a go? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. A little trivia. A little trivia there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Anyone else in the cast as far as, um, I mean, do they do this? Is this kind of their, their side thing, their, their hobby as far as acting is concerned? 
Uh, well, no. Uh, the, the guy who plays the lead, uh, uh, Paul Comte, uh, he uh, he's actually a uh, full-time actor now and has been since uh, we made a film. And he has uh, made, uh, f- for example, uh, uh, Mamma Mia, the, the ABBA show. He's been involved in and uh, different kind of theaters and films. So uh, as far as acting, he's the, the one who has made uh, most of an acting career uh, since then, uh, but also uh, the the actress who played uh, Ariana, uh, Carolina Noirat, she is uh, one of the hosts in a morning show on the national television now. Uh, so she's really well known. Um, yeah, I thought she, was, uh, she, yeah. she was a reporter, right? Initially, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. And also yeah. in office, so she has, uh, she, she's probably the most well-known of the, uh, the cast, cast members nowadays because uh, she gets this uh, huge exposure with, uh, she's a reporter and then a news anchor and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, and sure. author as well. So she has a lot of things she's done and I'm re- really happy for her as well because um she, uh, she uh, had this very grand uh, act- uh, actress dreams, but uh, I think she, it, it was the right decision for her that she was like, I'm just going to focus on you know, writing and yeah. th- this new stuff because that was her passion. We 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 saw that during the, the making as well because she was talking about these uh, real world events with like he's this huge passion and. Uh, um, Mostly, not uh, actors just talk about the, the craft of acting itself. No? Mm-hmm. So I think she, yeah. I'm really happy for where she ended up at. Yeah, very good. And she's cute, so you know she's got yeah, she's got a whole bunch <laughs> of things working for her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, then anything? Do uh, you want to touch upon anything you got coming up? You got anything you're working on? Something in the past that uh, you'd like to touch upon? Uh, well, um, I, uh, during the, the last few years of uh, First Destiny, I, I started to produce this other feature um, that has this international title of the Mother, but in Swedish, Sweden it's called Wilson. Uh, and that thing was, uh, became my first uh, directorial debut. So it's a, a commercial film. Uh, Wilson has gotten distribution in... Scandinavia, uh, in Japan, and South Korea, uh, and uh, will also be released in uh, the States sometime this year. Okay. Yeah, so that, that, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And also this summer, summer I will be shooting my next feature. Uh, that will be a uh, Viking horror story uh, called Rune of the Dead. And uh, some people that have worked on both uh, Fred's Destiny and Wilson will be reappearing. Okay, very uh, good. For example, uh, Andreas Lambert, who plays Lord Siege. Now, do you have distribution for these movies? Or do you make it yes. and seek distribution? Uh, for for Wilson, we first made a film and then we seek distribution. But for yeah. uh, Rune of the Dead, we uh, already have a uh, distributor uh, attached to a project. Okay, quality. Yes. And then do you go out and look for um, in, investors? Is it just uh, your money that you... That you um, yes, put yes we, we look for uh, investors to, to put into a movie. But uh, we are... Uh, we're trying to make them uh, really cheap. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you what the budget is, but it's uh, below one million dollars. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's so it's like uh, an imp- independent film uh, on uh, <laughs> an independent film on a grand scale. So in a way, it's yeah. um, <laughs> the, the well, same you know, in, same story as for cases, Destiny and Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. In a lot of cases, that's sometimes that's better <laughs> i mean yeah exactly. people get carried away and you can people get very creative when they don't have uh you know the money to go crazy so sometimes that's uh yeah exactly. me anyways yeah, it's more interesting uh they spent only this money on this and it's always yeah uh, interesting to see you know the product that can be done at a minimal and i've done i've been involved in uh like an indiana jones fan film so i know how a little money can go a long way because we did a lot 
with a little. Yeah. So I can appreciate. Yeah, that. and I think like uh, mostly when when you get a lot, uh, you get a big budget or a budget, for instance. It, it's like the more money you have to spend on a film, the, the more your hands get tied. Uh, you yeah. can't be as creative. You can't make as much with it because if you had a little money, you were able to be like more creative and then try to find uh, different solutions to uh, tell your story. But uh, ha- having a body to it, like in a way, you you think that it, that would help you, but uh, so far in my experience, it has uh, been the opposite. Right, you got a lot more people to answer to, so you got more exactly people, exactly fingers in the pie. So it makes makes the yeah. creative po- uh, you know creative process that more difficult. So totally understand. Yeah. All right, my brother. As promised, usually it's about you know thirty minutes to an hour we take for these uh, podcasts. So if you don't have anything else, nothing else you want to promote, uh, we can part as friends. Well, if uh, there's anybody who wants to get in touch or see what I'm up to, they can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, Rasmus Tisitis, Rasmus Tisitis, uh, T I R C I T E S. It's my last name, uh, Tisitis, and I have heard many, <laughs> many different, uh, it, uh, different trying to pronounce it. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, it's always always nice to start there. Like, how, how do you say your last name? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's on the web. It's on my website too. So if you know, you're having problems yeah. finding it, just look for Threads of Destiny at the uh, Fan Film Follies, and uh, I think I put it on here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm lying. Appreciate I'm lying. it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's a link to YouTube. You can get all that information from this movie and so on and so yeah. forth. And... All right, man. I appreciate your time. Oh, and, uh, thank you. It was real nice talking to you. Right. So that's why I do this thing because uh, you know I watch these movies. I want to talk to these people. So you know we started a podcast just to give an excuse to you know talk to people like yourself. Well, that's great. All right, brother. All right, man. You take care, and uh, yeah, we'll talk in the future and uh, keep in contact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same to you. Take care. Bye right, bye. Take care. Bye bye. I see you're learning. If you think spouting people...